grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pitom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became more ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Puah, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and you see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she had him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? <clears throat> Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. 
Word of God, Word of Life. A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassion in cheerfulness. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, 
Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They feared God, these Hebrew midwives. Twice, Exodus reminds us that these brave women feared God and simply would not obey the Pharaoh's genocidal command. They would not kill half of the Hebrew babies as they were born. The rabbis say that if you save one life, you save an entire world. These brave women saved a nation because they feared God and did what was right in the face of evil. Be transformed into Christ, not conformed to this world, Paul tells his Roman churches today. These midwives would not conform to a world where a ruler could order the death of half of their people's children. They lived lives transformed by their fear of the God of their ancestors who hadn't yet saved them from centuries of bondage. This happens before Moses is born. The Exodus is years in the future, but still they feared God and they did what was right. Paul urges the Romans today to be formed into Christ, to be transformed by the renewing of their minds, that is, their attitudes, their way of thinking and being. And for the next couple chapters, Paul will describe what the Christ-formed life looks like. But today, simply consider the possibility these midwives model for us. What if we are like they were? If we didn't conform to the brutal evil in our world, even if our leaders order it. If we didn't conform to systems and structures that crush our neighbor. If we didn't conform to the cultural attitude, me first. What if we ask the Spirit to transform our minds, our attitudes, our way of thinking and being, to be like that of Christ. Could we, like these midwives, save the world? Without a doubt. Because we have more than fear of God to work with. Fear of God is a proper thing, Luther taught us. To be in awe and reverence of the triune God who made the whole universe, stars, galaxy, is the only wise position to take. Only a fool says, that such a God is not to be feared. But we have met Jesus, whom Peter proclaims today is the son of that living God, God's anointed. We have seen Jesus' face. And Jesus' face is a face of love and grace and forgiveness. It is the face of the triune God for us, for you, for the creation. We have learned from the Son of God not only that the triune God is worthy to be feared. From Jesus, we have learned to love God. We have learned to trust God. It 
It's as Luther taught us in the, in the Catechism. We fear, love, and trust God above all things. So, if, like those midwives, you look at a world filled with evil that works against God's good will, you have more than your fear of God to inspire you to seek transformation. You know God loves you, so you can love God. You know God gives you life and grace now that will extend even beyond death, so you can trust God. And if you fear, love, and trust God, imagine what you can do in this world transformed by the Spirit into Christ. This could be the rock Jesus promises to build the church upon. Yes, Simon gets a new name, Rock, Peter. But what if the rock Jesus will build on isn't Simon Peter himself, but his trust in Jesus, his love for Jesus? That would mean then that the church is built on more than just Peter, that your trust in God your love of God, even your fear of God, are what gives the church its strength, as do mine, as do all Christ's disciples. Paul certainly believes that we're all part of the rock upon which Jesus will build. His breathtaking vision of the body of Christ, which we see here today, where each of us, you included, are individual members of the greater body, shows this. Every single member, small or great, is critical to the body's life. These midwives didn't lead Israel out of Egypt. All they did was simply help babies to be born. And we're still talking about them 3,000 years later. And astonishingly, remembering even the names of two of them. Whether you think you're important or not, you have gifts as a transformed Christ, Paul says, to change the world. Your job in standing against evil might be as simple as making sure you vote this fall and vote early. It might be something unnoticed, like a kindness to a neighbor. It might be an unseen sacrifice you make to be Christ's love to your family or your willingness to support policies that cost you but benefit your neighbor. Like these midwives, you are a transformed Christ, anchored in your fear, love, and trust in God. All you need to do is simply see what is before you and do what is right. Or, as Paul says, what is the will of God? What is good and acceptable and perfect? Nothing more is asked of you than this. Nothing less, either. And Jesus promises that no evil can withstand such a transformed body of Christ. Jesus sends you into the world, bearing your anointing, transformed in your mind, your attitude, your way of thinking and being to be Christ. And Jesus says, whenever you encounter the gates of Hades, they will crumble. Multiply that by millions of Christs. Pharaohs and rulers will be impotent in the face of such Christ love. Structures and systems that kill and crush will collapse like a house of cards when Christ's church approaches them, transformed and loving. If you save one life, you save an entire world. Be transformed into Christ, becoming another midwife for God, helping to give birth to God's healing grace and love, bringing them into existence and saving the world. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your son, whom we confess as the living God. Help us each to discern your will, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let us not be conformed to this world, but transformed by your love and sacrifice, so that we may serve the world and our neighbors with love and compassion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders and workers of your church, including Elizabeth, Anne, Joseph, David, Jim, Chaw, and James, our vestry and committee members, and other volunteers. Continue to walk with all the workers of your church throughout the world. Help them lead your church to promote loving dialogue, hospitality, reconciliation, and restoration. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up the ministries of our neighborhood partners at Sheridan Story as they coordinate the delivery of food to families who struggle with food insecurity, and in particular, Mount Olive's partner school, Jefferson Community School, and our mission partners in Africa, for Phil Knudsen as he supports the Lutheran Church in Southern Africa, and for Branham Seminary in Nigeria, its professors and pastors. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit on the leaders of all nations so that they will govern with humility and justice. Bring an end to all torture and violence. Encourage and strengthen all who put their lives at risk to work for peace around the world, in our nation, and here in our community, and wherever there is unrest. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give wisdom to all the people of the world to respect the bounty of the earth and your whole creation, which longs for generous care. Strengthen farmers, ranchers, and laborers who work throughout the summer heat. May they realize full harvests. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen to the cries of all those in need. Work through each of us to welcome refugees and immigrants. Tend to the abused, the captive, the dying, the grieving, the hungry, the lonely, the homeless, those who are marginalized and treated unfairly, those recovering from physical or mental illness or injury, and for those who may not recover, including our brother Dan. For those listed in our worship folder, for all who mourn, and for those we name. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen and renew all the baptized and bring blessings to the newly baptized, along with Mary Rose, Leanna, and Martin, who celebrate their baptismal anniversaries this week. Remind us that through baptism, we shed what is old and put on new garments, enabling us to live in love and faithfulness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community of faith in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church and for the sake of the world. We pray especially for all who serve in our community and around the world to care for people affected by the coronavirus and other diseases. As they use their gifts of healing and caring, protect them from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock and restore your people to joy and gladness. Sustain us in our faith as you did for all the witnesses who have gone before us, including Bartholomew, Monica, Augustine, Moses the Black, 
and all those departed saints who are dear to us. May we imitate their faith until the final day when you reunite us with all the saints for the feast at your table. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we in the world need, O God, grant us for the sake of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve as Christ.